Hello and welcome to episode 7 of Opera Vision's Next Generation series. I'm Nina Brazier, a stage director based in Frankfurt, and over this series we're diving into four European Young Artist programmes, exploring how the opera world is developing and nurturing the next generation of talent. From Opera for Peace to the Academia Rossiniana at the Rossini Opera Festival to the Palau de les Arts in Valencia and the Opera Studio at Oper Frankfurt. We have backstage access to masterclasses, concerts, rehearsal rooms and dressing rooms. To find out how the singers negotiate the physical and emotional highs and lows while exploring their unique operatic voice. Over the next couple of episodes, we're having deeper conversations with some young artists, experts and alumni. And today, we're at Oper Frankfurt, which is where I'm based as a staff director, chatting to the award-winning young soprano, Nombulelo Yende, and alumna of the opera studio, the award-winning mezzo-soprano, Paula Murray, among the most famous of Frankfurt's alumna. Today we'll be hearing how it felt for Nombulelo stepping onto the stage for a major role with just a few rehearsals. What made her shun negativity in favour of a more positive mindset? And how the studio at Oper Frankfurt set Paula Murray on the path to an international career. As always, let's hear a couple of opening words from our two guests. More than the singing, you always worried about the geography. Where do I need to be and when do I need to be? Oh, I need to be there when I sing this. You know you can sing it, which we should be worried about because the voice is something that is very unpredictable sometimes. But for me, I wasn't worried about my voice. I was more, much more worried about the geography. Where do I need to be? Ah, I need to go to him. Am I in the right spot? Is the light? Am I getting the light? Which is a note that I got the last time. I loved going through that stage door, meeting my favourite porters, saying hello to Rosvita in the Wigan Masca or Petra or whoever, and just knowing that all of these people make the house tick. So I definitely would say that I grew so much in this fest position, and I would say it's been the most important step in my career so far. Nambulelo has been preparing for the role of Tatiana in Onyegin at Oper Frankfurt, that luscious lyric soprano with its world-famous and incredibly long letter scene. She had two performances during the short run, and I wanted to catch her before the first one to hear how she's been getting on. It's hectic, it's busy. I think I'm only getting three days of rehearsals. <laughs> only three days of rehearsals, no orchestra rehearsal, no stage rehearsal, no uh, costume rehearsal. So everything is kind of going to be new for me on my opening nights, which is exciting in a way, but also kind of scary. And in those three days of rehearsal that you have, do you have the other people available to you to rehearse with you? Yes, I think um, all the cast members will be available to rehearse. Hopefully they're all there <laughs> because that would really help. No stranger to stepping on the stage at Oper Frankfurt on a very short rehearsal period is the Irish mezzo-soprano Paula Murray. What does she remember about her earliest experiences here? I did a very short stint of about three and a half months between, I think it was April and June or something. And I had about three weeks notice and they said, would you like to come and do a series of small roles just before you begin the programme? We need uh, a second lady in flute if you'd like to do Flora and Traviata. And I thought, OK, that's that's amazing. But it was a very short uh, lead in to it. So I remember desperately running for uh, some German uh, oh, lessons God, yes. and language coachings. <laughs> <laughs> and I went and, and I was just blown away. I mean, those first uh, few months uh, being immersed in this world of, of opera that I really had never known. I had never worked in Germany before and to be in a house where on one night I could see Britain's Rape Lucretia in the Bockenheimer Depot and the next night uh, La Boheme and uh, the following night, I don't know, the Macropolis case. I, I, I still remember just being sh shocked and overwhelmed actually by what was on offer and a little bit stressed out. <laughs> I was thinking I need to take advantage of all of this. Um, you know, and Anne-Sophie von Otter was performing across the way in the Alta Oper. And I thought, oh my God, there's just so much to take in here. And then I did the studio program, which was one year. And it was, it was only being established. And so I again 
got the opportunity to do these smaller roles while observing just how the the this theatre, this repertory theatre operates. Everything from backstage, the scheduling, what a revival meant, what a premiere meant, the way that one works differently when preparing a premiere or a revival. And ultimately then after being taken into the ensemble, I would say that the fest position, the job that I got as an ensemble member there allowed me to take risks because I had the stability of a job. I had the stability of a contract I had different roles that I could try out. And I knew that even if one was not the most amazing success or the one, you know, the one role that suited me perfectly, that it wasn't the end of the world. Sometimes as a freelancer, you get the sense that, oh my God, you know, if this job doesn't go well, well, then that's it. That's that connection mm. with that company or that that's gone and you're only as good as your last job. And of course, that there's a certain element of that. But what the fest job gave to me is this freedom to really explore my extremes, I suppose, or my possibilities as, as an artist, as a singer. And it um, it allowed me to take risks. And I'm so grateful for it. And I, I got to learn how to cope with doing a revival in two weeks, sometimes one week or jumping in. I mean, I learned, I performed my first Dora Bella in Christoph Loy's famous uh, Così Fan Tutte in Frankfurt. And I I prepared it in, I don't know, five days or something. And I had never sung it on stage before. And I felt that I could risk it and I could try it. And it wouldn't be the end of the world if it didn't happen. For anyone who is unfamiliar with the fest system, it involves opera houses having a group of singers of different voice types who are based at the opera house and paid a salary. They're given a range of different roles throughout each season and also have the opportunity, when it fits, to take on guest roles at other houses. Meanwhile, Nombulelo is getting used to working on multiple roles at the same time. I'm thinking about this busy time. Tatiana is huge coming up. Are you having still to juggle looking at Tatiana with masterclasses and preparing for other roles? How does that look? Oh, this is something that I did not prepare for. I never anticipated this, that one would have to learn probably three roles at the same time while performing a certain role and then kind of rehearsing for a different role. So all of this has been my life for the past two months. I've been learning Tatiana while uh, performing uh, the Tauberin, while learning the Ferneklang. Now I'm going to be performing Tatiana and I'm starting rehearsals for the Ferneklang. And I think next week I have to start on learning <laughs> my other role, the Electra. So it's it's all quite a lot, but um, I think I'm coping. I think so. When we chatted before, I wanted to bring us back. You said something really moving about not letting self-criticism defeat you. Was that always the case or did you have times when you were younger when this sort of inner critic and self-criticism did end up defeating you in certain situations? Oh, definitely. I think when I was younger and I think probably maybe two, three years back, it really got to me. It got to me. But I think the more I um, am on stage and the more I perform is the more I kind of have to be optimistic and have to tell myself and be confident in myself and say, you know what, this is good. Everything will be okay. So I, I try not to let my inner critique take over everything because then that brings in the fear. And then when fear comes in, nothing happens. Nothing happens. So yeah. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
wondered if Nombulelo's sunny yet practical optimism was something she's always had. I've had to learn. I have to learn to be optimistic and see the positive um, in, in everything. And that helps me also. This helps me in my learning process. This helps me in my, uh, with my colleagues in the working environment also. When I'm optimistic and I'm happy and I'm like, ah, this is going to be great, then that makes me, my working process much easier. Tell us, how can the rest of us adopt that sense of optimism? <laughs> because you say you've learned it. How? How can we all do that? Um, I don't know. I think for me, it, it's just, um, I, I got to a point where I got tired of always seeing the negative in everything I did. And I just decided that, no, no, that's not my life. Because you don't feel good inside when you always see the negative and always see everything as bad. I just decided that, no, there might be negative things, but there's also going to be positive things. And I'm deciding to focus on the positive things yeah. while working on the negative, of course. Yeah. But and yeah. what was that turning point? Was it something specific that happened or was it just over time? <laughs> it was something specific. I started reading comments on the videos that we have online, of course. And um, after a while, I decided that this does not make me feel good at all. And it actually makes me want to stop singing. And I don't want to stop singing because this is me. This is just my life. I just sing. So I decided, no, this negativity is making me doubt what I have and what I want to do. And I'm deciding not to focus on it anymore. Yeah. So that's, that's, that was the turning point for me. I asked Paula Murray what she thought was the biggest turning point in her operatic life. I would say that my move to Opera Frankfurt was probably the most important step in my career. I had always wanted to kind of move closer to home and Opera Frankfurt uh, provided me with that opportunity. I had entered the Neue Stimmen competition and uh, I didn't make it to the final, but Herr Löbe was on the panel and shortly afterwards invited me to participate in their first ever uh, opera studio programme. I had a manager at this point and when, when Sue, my manager, said, you know, um, uh, Bernd Löbe would like to invite you to this opera studio programme, I thought... God, am I going to do another studio program? <laughs> Should I do another studio program? And she said, well, this is a very special house, she said. You know, it is a very well respected. It does a broad range of repertoire and I think it might suit you very well. And it was really the best decision um, that we could have made. As well as the professionals around her, Nombulelo has another voice keeping her on track. Bully is the name she gives to her own alter ego. How has Bully been treating you? Has she been kind? Has she been encouraging you over this hectic time? Or has she been kind of punishing you to stay on track? What's your voice like at the moment? Uh, Bully has been great. <laughs> <laughs> Bully has been great. Bully has been very encouraging. I think that's why I'm, I'm, all, I'm smiling and happy because at the current rates, I shouldn't be this... Uh, happy and smiley. I should be kind of stressed. But Willie's been encouraging and Willie encouraging me has made the, the whole process for me easier, even though it's it's quite busy, but it's just making it easier for me to, to focus on what I need to do and have a plan and do my work. And I'm ready for rehearsals. I'm ready for whatever. And I'm never in a state of nervousness or, oh, I'm unprepared. So yeah, yeah Bully has been great. One thing that I really remembered from our last conversation is that you said that you can sometimes be lazy. And I'm thinking that was so interesting to me. And I'm wondering, what are your tips for getting that sense of motivation to kick in and getting over that laziness that, that you know, happens? to all of us of course I think for me what I do is try to remind myself why I am doing what I'm doing you know when I get lazy I need to remind myself yeah you, you yeah, maybe you deserve a break but also you need to kind of catch up on your work you need to be prepared it's very embarrassing to walk into a rehearsal room and not know your work and that's the one thing I fear the most so that is what motivates me not to be lazy actually <laughs> yeah. the embarrassment the embarrassment of being the only one amongst your colleagues who's just kind of lost and not prepared I don't want that so how did the performance go I caught up with Nombulelo in her dressing room during the performance of Tatiana in Onyegin at Ope Frankfurt shortly after the epic letter scene that I mentioned an aria that is long complex and in this production, not only vocally, but also dramatically demanding. 
Yeah, it's exciting. It's 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 a beautiful feeling. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. this is your second performance. I'm wondering, either the first time round or this time round, what was the most surprising thing about being up there on the stage? I think the first time around, I was a bit more cautious, both vocally and acting wise, because everything was kind of new. Well, it wasn't kind of new; it was new. So <laughs> I was very calculating. Um, so I wasn't really free. Yeah. I feel like in this performance, I because I know where everything is, I know what I need to do. I'm just enjoying myself. What would you say was the high point, either this time or the first time you had your performance? What would you say is the moment that is probably going to stay with you afterwards? I think the letter scene for me. Every time I finish, I finish the letter scene, I've really received that love from the audience, and I can feel it. And I think that's going to stay with me for a long time because I can, I can feel the energy. I can feel that they they're with me and they appreciate it, which is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Here she is at our opera studio soiree, performing that scene, accompanied by Yuna Saito. Bulelo's dressing room, the opera continues on stage with the duel scene in the background. I wondered how she feels after highs such as the extraordinary one she's just experienced with the letter scene and her performances of Tatiana. How are you feeling at the end of it? Is there an elation and is there a crash down afterwards? How does that feel? There's definitely a crash down. <laughs> <laughs> There's definitely a crash down because we human, we, we analyse everything, we criticise everything we do. So I'm probably going to go home tonight and be like, ah, I could have done that better. I could have done that better. But I think even though I will have that criticism in me, I can appreciate and be proud of myself that I, I did it. And did she want to change anything from her first to her second performance? Definitely, I went through my score immediately afterwards, after the show. I went home, I went through my score. I marked everything that I could do better or everything that didn't go as I wanted it to go. And I tried to fix it in this performance, which I think is working out. <laughs> as we heard, Nombulelo had only three days to get the role stage ready and no rehearsal with the orchestra. What was the most terrifying part of the whole experience? Um, being at the right place at the right time. <laughs> because we have a moving stage and leaving things where they're supposed to be left and that they don't live with the stage when the stage changes. I think that for me was the most terrifying that I be at the right place at the right time and don't mess it up. So that's why I'm saying in the first performance, I was very calculative. I was very like, I need to be here. I was looking around. This is where I need to be, my distance between this and that. So that's the difference. Now I know where I am. I know I need to be. I know if I need to move a little bit, I move a little bit, no stress. When you perform this role again in the future, is there something you think over and above what you've already brought to it? What would you like to layer on the next time round? I think I would love to do a bit more character development, I think. I didn't have enough time to think, really think about that because I was so fixated on singing the right notes and the right technique and, and, and that the character I kind of neglected. So that's the one thing I want to do, a little bit more of character development. When Paula and I first worked together on a revival of Ariadne Naxos here at Ope Frankfurt, 
she was pregnant with her second child and went on to perform at the Salzburg Festival just 12 weeks after her daughter was born. I've recently been approached by young artists who are wondering if parenthood and an operatic career can really work. It is something that Paula has negotiated really well and something that's close to my heart as I juggle a demanding full-time job and a podcast with bringing up a young toddler. I asked Paula how she balances performing and parenthood. So, as we know, we can only talk from personal experience. Everybody has a very different experience, especially women with pregnancy. I was so fortunate that with both of my pregnancies, I felt very well right up until the end. I felt physically well, vocally, pretty pretty good. And if anything, I feel like I sang in a in a freer way <laughs> towards the towards the kind of middle to latter end of each each pregnancy. And so Componist, that was interesting because it was a role debut. And as you are very well aware, that was a fabulous but highly detailed uh, production. And um, what I find is that when you're doing a revival as opposed to a premiere, that with the revival, the singer has a lot more responsibility to know and to become familiar with as much of the staging as possible before we even get into the rehearsal room, because there's just no time. So singing that role and debuting in that role and having your support and the support of my colleagues uh, was, was a fabulous experience. Coming back afterwards, you just don't know, not really knowing how you're going to feel. And again, I was, I was pretty fortunate that I felt well and I was able to continue kind of pick up about 12 weeks after, after both pregnancies. I will say that without the support of Eamon, my husband, my family, I have amazing friends um, that, that came, came to help. That, that wouldn't have been possible. So I really do feel like a support network is just essential. There's just no way um, otherwise. I think, especially after Fola, my second daughter was born, going back to singing at the Salzburg Festival was a very tough ask. And it was a role debut, Idamante in Idomeneo. And I look back and it was a wonderful collaboration with Peter Sellers and Theodor Kurensis, but it was a huge undertaking. And I remember being very, very tired during the rehearsal process. And I think it's just the intensity of the festival. And just because it's so high profile, I did feel that in an intense way. And while it was uh, wonderful. It was also a lot of stress, you know, um, immediately afterwards. I think I don't have a difficulty in separating Paula the performer and Paula the mother. I don't even think they're separate. I think they inform in some ways each other. I think it is important to show my girls how much I enjoy doing my work, how important my work is is to me only because then that when I have to go away for work, that they realize that it's something that I am happy to do, that I'm proud of doing, and that I'm not bemoaning the fact that I have to leave them or go away. Because then if if they think that I'm going away to do something I'm not happy to do or I'm sad about doing, then I would imagine that they would say, well, why don't you just stay with us? But it is important to me. And I think it helps me um, be a better mom. And finally, I asked Paula, how she thinks we can make the opera world a better place. I want opera to just be seen by young people, by everybody, um, in the same way that, that people go to the cinema, that they should go to the opera. I would love that it were just more accessible. And not that you need to teach people about it, just go experience it. And if you want to close your eyes and just let the music wash over you, then that's one thing. If you really do want to invest yourself in the drama and every moment of it, then go for it. But not to see it as something that you have to work hard to understand or to um, appreciate it. I really, really don't, I don't enjoy that part of it. Um, I don't believe that it's elite. I think it is for everybody. Yes, it's complicated and it can have its, yeah, I mean, this idea that, that it, it is inaccessible. It's something that we have to get past. Thank you so much to Nombulelo Yende and Paula Murray for joining me today on Opera Vision. And thanks to you for listening. There's plenty more online at operavision.eu, where from Thursday the 9th of March you can see the Opera Studio Soiree with young artists from Oper Frankfurt, directed for the screen by me, alongside my dear colleague Anske Mattison. 
Also online is an evening of operetta and zarzuela from the young artists at the Palau de les Arts. I'll link to those in the show notes and give details on the other music extracts you heard in this episode. We'll be back at the Palau de les Arts in Valencia on Saturday the 1st of April. This series is edited and produced by Karen Piri and curated and hosted by me, Nina Brazier. Our provision is co-funded by the European Commission. Thank you.